All right, so we are in uh, chapter two, section seven for I am three, graphing linear and absolute value inequalities. So this one has quite a few pages you can see at the bottom. Um, I kind of gave each problem its own page to hopefully make it a little bit bigger here um, so that we can complete some of this um, absolute value graphing. Um, and or inequality graphing as well. Um, so first, let's just go ahead and read this uh, first part of the notes page here. So graphing linear inequalities. A linear inequality resembles a linear equation, but with an inequality symbol instead of an equal symbol. So for example, we have y is greater than negative 3x minus 2 um, being a linear inequality, and y equals negative 3x minus 2 is the related linear equation. The reason they're relating these two is because we can use the same idea that we use to graph this line as we do to graph this inequality. Um, so the graph of the inequality um, is shown at the right, and I just didn't read it, y is greater than negative 3x minus 2. Um, and it, it is shown as a shaded region. So remember, this equation is a line, it's a solid line, and your solutions are on that line. When we have an e inequality, um, it's a range of answers, or in this case, an area of answers. So the line is a boundary. So the graph of y equals negative 3x minus 2 is the boundary. So that's the stopping point. If it's um, greater than or less than, it's a dotted line. Just like when we were doing this before and it was an open dot, closed dot, so dotted line. This means it's not included in the answer. It's a starting point or boundary. Um, if it's um, greater than or equal or less than or equal, then it is a solid line and it means that it is included. Just like the open and closed dot idea. Okay, it's just telling you whether or not it's included. It's a visual representation. Um, and let's see. So that they go through and they say the same thing I just said. I just kind of said it in my own way. Um, and the way that we graph this, so we, we use y equals mx plus b. So I have negative 2 here. That's my y-intercept. And I have negative 3. Remember, that's over 1. So I have down 1, and I, because I can go down 3 and over 1, and I land on this spot. If I couldn't go down 3, I could reverse it and go up 3 and left 1. So I go 1, 2, 3, 1. So I, I can see it lands in the line. It's dotted because, um, or um, instead of dotted, you could say dashed, um, because it's only greater than. Um, and the way that I like to look at greater than is I go back to this y-intercept and then I draw a line. Greater than means up, so I'm shading on that side. L if it was less than, I would go down, so it would tell me to shade on this side of the line. Because sometimes greater than or less than is a little hard for students to determine. This one is, is usually easy. I can kind of tell this is greater than, this is less than. But when we start to get more vertical lines, it's a little harder sometimes for students to tell because both sides, you know, might seem like they're both going up technically. This side goes up forever, this side goes up forever. But what it what it wants you to do is look at this point here and say, okay, greater than, that tells me which side I'm shading on. And this shaded area is where your solution can be. So you can pick any point in here and it will be a solution for this inequality. Um, all right, so here's an example that they're giving us down here. The boundary of the graph um, oh, sorry, so graph x plus 4y is greater than 2. Um, so the boundary of the graph is the graph of x plus 4y equals 2. Since the inequality symbol is greater than, the boundary will be dashed. So we're going to test the point 0, 0 because it is not on the boundary. Um, and I'm going to scooch down here. So they're going through and they're testing points to find, figure out where, what's greater than, what's less than. That's another way you can do this. You can plug in some points and see if they work. Um, you plug in, if you picked, a, say, this point, and you plugged it into this equation, 
you would not get the correct um, format, meaning the left side would not be greater than the right side. So you would know that that's not within the boundary. And then you could test a point on this side, and it would work out correctly. The left side would be greater than the right side when we plugged it in. So that's another way you can also figure out which side to, to shade on. Um, they graphed this very quickly without telling you how they did it. So they're just assuming at this point we know how to graph a line. Um, I would definitely put it in y equals mx plus b format. So subtract the x um, over to this other side. So I'm just going to go minus x, minus x, and then divide by 4 on all sides. And remember, that means everything divided by 4. So these cancel, and we have y is greater than 1 half minus 1 fourth x. Um, so that's why we can see, um, and this is kind of written backwards because this, this is my slope, and this is my y-intercept, my b, okay, y-intercept, gosh dang, that looks like an intercept. So I'm intercepting at, na at one half, so I can kind of see that's happening, it's halfway here. And then I, I have a slope of negative one fourth, so I can go down one and one. Oh, sorry, I have to go down a full one because I have to go down. Um, it's half and then another half, and then one, two, three, four, and we can see it lands right on top there. And I could go up one and one, two, three, four, and look at that, I land right on the graph. So it does work correctly, um, putting it in this format, and that's. That's how they did it. Um, you could also do the, the x and the y intercepts if you wanted, or you plugged in zero for each. It just depends on which method you like best, really. Um, and then you can check to see which one was correct. But since it's greater than um, here, I would go to this point, this y intercept, and go greater than. So that's my method. I like that little cheat there. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and try one of these on our own. Um, so we'll go ahead and use x and y intercepts on this one just so we see both methods again. So if I want the x intercept, I make the y zero. So x plus one half times zero is, um, and instead of greater than, I'm just gonna write equals two for now. Because remember, we're, we're trying to find the boundary line really quick, so it's an equal sign. Um, and it's gonna be dashed no matter what, because it's a, a less than, it's not less than or equal to. So we have three X plus zero equals two. So we're gonna divide by three, divide by three, and we get X equals two thirds. So this is my X intercept. And then I'm gonna make Y zero And so this, this disappears, I just have one half y equals two. I'm gonna multiply by two on both sides. I have y equals four. So this is my y intercept, intercept. All right, so now I can go ahead and graph them. So on my y, I'm going to go to four and I'll go back to blue here. So I'm gonna go two thirds for x, so it's gonna be about right there-ish. Um, hopefully that's pretty close. Um, and instead of using my line feature, because it'll do a, a solid line, I'm gonna do the best I can here. Da -da -da -da. Nope, that's not really that great, let's see. Okay, close-ish. Apologize, I'm not that great at drawing the straight lines here. I do like using the, the solid line tool, but um, I want it to be dashed so that it's it's very clear that it's a dashed line. Um, and I'll put my points back on here. So it's not perfect on there. This will be a little bit easier on Alex because you won't have to worry about this. You just pick your line tool and you just have to decide um, is it dashed, is it solid, and then it'll snap to the points that you put on here. So we have our, our limit. We have our, our points here, and we just need to decide on our shading. 
Um, so I would go back um, to this point, and if I had one half y, um, actually, if you don't, so let's go ahead and test points because we don't have it set up as y is greater than or y is less than. So my little method of doing that only works if you have it set up as y is less than or equal, y is less than or y is greater than. It can be equal to also, but. Um, so if we just test a point, let's test a point on this side. And this is negative three, two. So I'm gonna plug it in and I have three times negative three plus one half times two is greater than two. So I have negative three plus one, because these cancel, two times one half is just one, is less than two. So then I have negative eight is less than two. That's true. That does, that is true. Two is greater than negative eight or eight. negative eight is less than two. So that means that I'm actually going to shade on this side, okay? Because that's exactly where I want it to be. So if I would have tested on the other side here, um, let's just pick another point up here. Let's say, so this is four and four. So if I plug this in and I go three times four plus one half times four, is greater than two, I'd have 12 plus one half of four is two, is greater than two, or less than two, sorry. This is 14 is less than two, that is not right. So we would not use this one, because that 14 is not less than two, 14 is greater than two. So it just tells us really quickly which side to graph on. So if you, by chance, pick the right side like I did, Great, you don't have to test both of them. I was just showing you what happens. All right, let's go ahead and try another one of these guys. So this one's a little simpler. It doesn't have quite as much going on here. It just says x is greater than or equal to negative six. So we're gonna draw a straight line here um, on x and negative six. So that means this is going to be a vertical line on x is negative six and it's um, greater than or equal to, so it is a solid line. Um, and greater than or equal to means that it's it's not going to go smaller than this. So it's greater than this line. So I'm going to shade everything on the side of the line. Do, 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 do. And you can do a better shading job, I think, on your, um, your paper if you need to. And on the Alex program, they have the shading option on there. So you just click on the shading option and click on the area and it shades it for you. All right, let's look at the next one here. So we have X plus four Y is less than or equal to two. So this one I'm gonna go ahead and put in Y equals MX plus B format so you can just see me do it. So we're gonna subtract X from both sides and these cancel, we have four Y. I'm gonna go ahead and put the negative X in front here just so that it's in the correct format. Divide by four, divide by four. So we have y is less than or equal to negative one fourth x plus one half. Um, all right, so now we have it in the correct format. So this is also my limit line. And since it's equal to, it's going to be a solid line. So I can go ahead and start saying this is my intercept. Intercept, this is my y intercept and this is my slope. So I can go ahead and graph this right now. I'm gonna go one half is my y-intercept, there it is, one half, and then my slope is negative one and positive four. So negative one, positive four, one, two, three, four. I think this was the exact example earlier, wasn't it? Um, positive one, one, two, three, four, something about right there. And I can even do a solid line between these guys. Okay, I'm keep going this way. I'll try to extend it up that way. Oop, there we go. Um, so this would keep going in both directions like that. Um, and then because I have it set up as y is, this y is all by itself, I can look at this and say it's less than, 
So I know I'm going to shade on this side. It's, it's below. Less than tells me to put the arrow down. Greater than tells me to put the arrow up. Um, so I would just shade on this whole side. And this is my solution area. Okay. So this is the, the basic idea here. You can also test points if you don't like this idea of doing the arrow up or down. All right. We're going to take a look at... Um, how do linear inequalities relate to the real world application? So we're gonna take a look at a real world situation. Recreation, a recreation center offers various 30 minute and 60 minute art classes. The recreation director has allotted up to 20 hours per week for art classes. Write an inequality to represent the number of classes that can be offered per week uh, and then graph the inequality. So we're gonna let X represent the number of 30 minute or half hour art classes. And we're gonna let Y represent the number of 60 minute or one hour art classes. So we have two different representations here. X is art class that's only 30 minutes. <coughs> and Y are art classes that are a full hour long. Because the sum can equal the maximum, the inequality symbol is less less than or equal to um, and the boundary is solid the inequality is one half x because we have half an hour plus y that's one hour y is less than or equal to 20 because um, we want to know the recreation director has allotted up to 20 hours per week for our classes so we want to know kind of what what combinations could we do with these two so first we graph the boundary line. So we can do x and y intercepts. We could set this equal pretty easily to y equals mx plus b because I could just subtract. I could have y equals negative 1 half x plus 20. So that one's pretty easy. Now I have my intercept, intercept, and I have my slope. So that's pretty dang easy to set up. Um, and my y-intercept I can see right here, there's 20. My slope is, I'm going to go down 1 over 2. Um, and I want to do this in a way that makes sense. This is going by 5. So if I go down 1, I'm not really going down 1 on this. I'm going down 5. So that means that I need to go over 10, which makes sense. That's exactly where I land here. So this shows this line, so we could graph it. It's less than or equal to, so that's why it's solid. Um, and because it's less than, I would go below this line and I would just shade in everything. Um, we don't go to the negative section here. It's only in this region because we're not going to have negative time for either one of the classes. That wouldn't really make sense. So we can choose anything we want within here. We could have um, 5 and 5. We could have 20 and 5. We could have... 20 and 10. Um, so it just depends on how many classes we want to have um, for each. But this is the number of classes for each one. So down below it says, can the recreation di director schedule 25 of the 30-minute classes and 15 of the 60-minute classes during a given week? Explain your answer. So if we do that, if we go over to 25 and then we go up to 15, whoop, up to 15, that's not within our limit. So it says the point 25, 15 lies outside the shaded region, so it does not satisfy the inequality. Thus, the re recreation director cannot schedule 25, 30 minute and 15, 60 minute classes because it's, it's too much. It goes over the 20 hours per week. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the next one here. So... Manuel has fifteen dollars to spend at the fair, so he that's the amount he can spend. He can't spend more than that, but it can be equal to that. So we we know it's going to be less than or equal to fifteen, whatever we're setting up, because that's as much as he has to spend. The fair costs five dollars for admission, and seventy five cents for each ride um, ticket, and twenty five cents for each game ticket. Write an inequality and draw a graph that represents the number of ride and game tickets that Miguel can buy. So they're already telling us R for ride and G for game. 
so we need to make sure we're paying attention to how much they cost. So it's 75 cents for each ride. So it's going to be 75R, because it's 75 cents per ride, plus it's going to be um, 25 cents per game, because that's what they told us up here, 25 cents per game. All right, we're just pulling out the important information here. And again, they told us what to use. Make sure you're paying attention to that, because if you use the wrong variables on Alex, you may do the, the problem perfectly, but if you use the wrong variables when you write your inequality and it asks you to type in that equation, it will mark you wrong because you did not follow directions. Um, and then that's kind of the simple idea there. You didn't follow the directions it told you to follow. Um, and the fare costs $5 for admission. So we need to add the $5 in here because he has to spend that also. Um, and all of this has to total less than or equal to 15. Um, all right, so let's kind of simplify this. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So we have 0.75R plus 0.25G is less than or equal to $10. That's what he has left. He has to spend 5 of that 15 just to get in. Now he has $10 left for the rest of this. Um, and for this one, we just have to decide which side we're doing on this one. Um, so we can do rides on the bottom, we could do games on the side. Could you do games and rides? Of course, you could. But I'm just gonna go ahead and let's see, can I write sideways here? Games and rides, okay? Um, so we're gonna figure out the, the graph for this. So this is kind of my X, this is kind of my Y. That's what I just did when I did rides across the bottom and games across the top, so, or across the side. So just keep in mind, even though it's R and G, we can still treat them the same once we assign the, the sides here. Um, one thing we can do to kind of help with this, it, we could divide everything by 0.25 because the, then we'd get rid of all these decimals. So if I divided everything by 0 0.25, what I would get would, there's three of them here, so I get 3R plus just G, and then 10, if I think about how many quarters there are in $10, there'd be 40 quarters, or I could just say 10 divided by 2.5 and I'd get 40. So this is kind of a little easier to look at for me. Um, it just depends on you know what you want to do with that but this is a little easier to look at so if I want to know I can either plug in zeros for my x-intercepts or I could kind of do y equals mx plus b so I could subtract 3r from both sides because remember this is my y right now so I'd have g is less than or equal to negative 3r plus 40 so now this is my y-intercept, intercept, and this is my slope. Um, all right, so we need to decide, because this is zero, and we need to decide what we're counting by going up here. So we're not gonna count by ones, but we could count by fives, right? That would make sense, and I should not have drawn games so close there because now I'm writing right on top of it. Let's see. I'm going to erase it. It's going to look funny on the answer key, but that's okay. So 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Um, all right, so we'll stop there. Just I should have changed my color for doing that, but this is for games. And then rides, so we can do the same thing. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Okay, so we know our starting point is 40 